Hello students, welcome to the special lecture series of the DBMS and SQL Viva and interview questions. In the last lecture, we have discussed questions from question number 1 to 10. Uh, today, we will discuss some more questions. <clears throat> so, let us start with the question number 11 here. Discuss the alternative terminology that is used in the relational model. So, in the relational model, we have different terminology where the relations are also called as tables. And sometimes uh, they are also called as uh, term files. Uh, a row is known as a tuple. So these are the terminologies where we call a row as a tuple in the relational model. It is also referred as a record. And finally, the relational model attributes are known as the columns. So these are the attributes that can be considered as columns or as fields. So these are the major terms that are used with the relational model. Now let's talk about the other question. Why are functional dependencies not equivalence? So whenever we talk about the functional dependencies, you must have seen that arrow uh, that uh, uses to say implies basically. So it is not an equivalence. We never write A is equal to B. We write A then we write with the arrow and B. So this is the uh, dependencies are not uh, equations so these are not equations basically equations deals with the why this is so because equations deals with the numerical relationship and a functional dependency deals with the existence of a determinant relationship between the two attributes so what we mean by the determinant relationship that means whether an attribute a determines other attribute b or in the other sense, we can say whether an attribute B is dependent on the attribute A or not. So this is uh, the uh, determinants. For example, if uh, I have uh, one attribute as a, a name and other attributes as a address. So I can say that address may be dependent on name. So there is no equivalence stance. There is no equation stance. So the address can be a dependent attribute on the name attribute. So in that sense, we have the dependency relationship. So now this, uh, regardless of whether it is not a numerical relationship between them. So we have uh, this dependency relationship. Now let's talk about the uh, next question. What is a foreign key and why it is used for? Uh, we have heard about the keys in the database system, uh, foreign key, candidate key, primary key, alternate key, super key, composite key, there are multiple keys. Uh, it is advisable for you all to uh, learn the definition of all the keys and the purpose of all the keys. So here we will talk about the foreign key. A foreign key basically is used to relate or establish a relationship among relations so it basically establishes a relation between two relational models two tables uh, it is a foreign key basically is a column or uh, appearing in one relation that is uh, the primary key of another table so uh, uh, one uh, column in one table ref uh, relates with the uh, one column in the other table which is the primary key so uh, for example we have uh, our detail in our college databases so we have our personal details also and we have the account details also. So for the normalization purpose, we will divide the data or information into two different tables. One, the personal uh, information about the students and other, the account related information of the students. In both the tables, uh, there will be a common column, let's say student ID. So just to uh, relate these two tables, the data of these two tables, we will uh, connect these uh, uh, student id column in both the tables with the help of a foreign key so the next column uh, next question what are insertion and deletion anomalies so here the anomalies terms occur uh, if you'll see we have seen the updation anomalies uh, deletion anomalies and insertion anomalies so these are basically errors can also be considered as errors not exactly but let's see a deletion anomaly occurs when by deleting the fact about one entity, we inevitably delete the facts about another entity. So that means whenever we are trying to delete the fact about some entity, but 
विदाउट नोइंग और बाई अन नोइंग मैनर और इन एविडेंटली वी डिलीट द रिकॉर्ड्स ऑफ द अदर एंटिटी ऑल्सो सो दिस इज द डिलीशन एनॉमली एंड सिमिलरली वील से लेट से द एग्जाम्पल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द डिलीशन एनॉमली इफ यू डिलीट द टपल फॉर स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम अ टेबल we may lose not only the fact about the student but about uh, its uh, in some other table also because it might be related with the uh, foreign key with the reference key so we lose the data about that student in both the tables so we we are we were trying to delete the data from one table but in evidently uh, the data will be deleted from both the tables so this is the deletion anomaly now the an insertion anomaly happens when we encounter the restriction that we cannot insert a fact about one entity until we have an additional fact about the another entity so whenever the there are restrictions about the insertions and uh, we cannot insert the fact about one entity uh, without involving the fact about the other entity For example, if you want to store the fact that the uh, security deposit for Pierce Hall is three hundred dollar, but we cannot enter the data into the student relation until a student register for that particular hall. So these are the uh, anomalies. The next question: What does it mean when we say that a relation is in BCNF boycott normal form? Yes, this is a type of the normal forms. we have seen the normal forms uh, one normal form 1 nf 2 nf 3 nf and bcnf so a relation is in bcnf when every determinant in the relation is a candidate key in a simple sense when every determinant in the relation is a candidate key so that means uh, this is a candidate key that means that any possible primary key can determine all other attributes in the relation and attributes may not be determined by may not be determined by non candidate key attributes and a part of a composite candidate key so that kind of relation will be into the bcnf relation now let's go to the next question what is the inconsistent value problem the inconsistent value problem occurs when different users or data sources use uh, slightly different forms of the same data so for example uh, in one uh, table or in one uh, source is it is written as ford two door red and in the other it is written red ford two uh, the inconsistent uh, values problem uh, generally occurs with the date format also so maybe you have written uh, Uh, y y y y m m d d format date or uh, if it is written in somewhere else in the form as d d m m y y y y so the format is different the data is same but the format is different so such type of uh, problem uh, or inconsistencies into the database will term will be termed as inconsistent value problems let's talk about another question explain the relationship between excuse me entity entity class and entity instance so all these three things similar uh, seems to be very similar uh, with each other so an entity is something that can be identified in the user's work environment something that the user want to track entities of a given type are grouped into entity classes similar type are grouped into classes and an entity instance is the representative of a particular entity so here we can uh, very similarly we can relate this entity with the objects if you have uh, learned the programming languages then uh, the similarly whatever the difference in between object class and instance the same difference is here with the entity entity class and entity instance entity could be anything that can be represented entity class is a group where all the similar type of entities come together an entity instance is one representative of that particular entity or entity class now what is the difference next let's talk about the next question 
explain the difference between attributes and identifiers so what is the difference between attributes and identifiers so attributes are properties that describe the entity's characteristics for example if we have a if have an entity student then its uh, attributes uh, student id student name student roll number student address these are all the attributes <clears throat> an entity instance have identifiers which are attributes that name or identify entity instance so whenever the instance is particularly identified uh, by some attribute that attribute will be known as the identifier in most of the cases primary key attribute let's say student id or a student name that uh, specifically identify a particular entity name and describe the three parts of binary relationship uh, so these are the relationship among um, entities so one is to one one is to n n is to n uh, one is to one is the single entity instance so one type is related to a single entity instance of another type similarly one is to n whenever a single entity instance of one type is related to many entity instances of another type and n is to n is whenever the many entity instances of one type relate to many entity instances of another type so uh, that's it for the lecture let's uh, talk about more questions into the upcoming lectures feel free to comment and ask your queries thank you so much